We're at the Living Computers Museum in Seattle, where they have a new exhibit on the history of Apple. So the Apple One, obviously Apple's first product, the designation One comes from it being the first thing that uh, Steve Wozniak designs before there is even an Apple computer. Um, so Woz, uh, Woz's dad is an engineer, and uh, so obviously kind of rubbed off on the kid, and uh, he, he was very, very uh, talented, obviously, because he managed to do something like this. And he designs the Apple One to be kind of the computer he wants to, to have and to use. So it has a keyboard and it has a TV display that you can see what you're actually typing and doing on the screen, which was a new idea at the time. Nobody had really done that before, put a keyboard and a display on a personal computer. When they sold the Apple One, it was literally a board. You had to supply your own power supply, your own keyboard, your own monitor. So all you got was the board for $666.66. The manual told you, go out and buy this, this set of transformers. Uh, the, the, this is the part numbers that are available. This is what they cost. Um, and you went to Allied Electronics or somebody like that and ordered them at that point. Then you would um, get that stuff home, you wire it yourself, they show you how to, uh, where the wires go, um, they, they give you a connector, a mating connector that you, you put together, and, uh, and then hopefully you power it up and, and things work. So he designs it, starts giving away the schematics, and then Steve Jobs convinces him, well, we should sell this thing instead. Uh, instead of just giving it away to the designs, let's sell it. Um, so they form Apple Computer Company to do that, and they produce 200 of the Apple One boards. Uh, so a very limited run. It's kind of like the, the Swiss Army knife. Once you invent it, basically you can use it everywhere. And, and they, they, they picked that because they could get hold of it. It was cheap, and obviously after three or five years, most people moved on from this machine because there was a better one out, out there. Uh, Apple came out with more products, everyone else came out with more products. So they internally knew they wanted to sell a more mature product. Um, so they started playing around with different designs. Steve Jobs really wanted a molded plastic case, but a molded plastic case is pretty expensive to make. So they started with sheet metal. So the one we have behind us is this two-tone sheet metal case that was custom made as a prototype to test things out. Uh, once again, it's the only surviving prototype case that we know of. So in 1985, Apple's struggling a little bit. Uh, Steve Jobs had not done very well with the Lisa project, and then the Macs were not selling the way that Apple had hoped, uh, so he quits in 1985. Um, he leaves Apple, uh, and when that happens, the HR department at Apple put the notice out saying, hey, anybody want to come take some stuff from Steve's office? Go ahead and do it. Uh, so sometime that afternoon, an engineer named Don Huntmacher goes into Steve's office, uh, takes a bag of Starbucks coffee off the shelf, and this kind of old beat up um, metal cased computer that was there. And he thought it was something kind of interesting. Nobody else had bothered to take it. Uh, so he took both those things home. Uh, the computer was left in his garage workshop for about 30 years. First clue, you know, other than it coming from Steve's office that it was special, was it had a tag inside, handwritten tag, that, has, that says ACM Mod 1977 um, and signed BF. Um, and if you do a little research, you find out Bill Fernandez is Apple's first employee. Um, they were able to contact Bill and he confirmed, yes, I wrote that note. Um, so now you've got the first employee's name on it. You know it came from Steve Jobs' office. You know it was designed and built by Steve Wozniak. So it's starting to feel like a pretty co important computer. So immediately after Steve um, uh, Wozniak finishes the Apple I, he starts on the Apple II. Um, so immediately starts designing what's really his dream computer, which is this all-in-one machine. Um, so at this point, Mark Markula comes onto the scene, who's their first VC. So he puts his own money into the company, and then he goes out to people like Arthur Rock to raise more money so they can actually make the Apple II. Well, to do that, you need a demonstration computer. Um, and the machine behind us is what we think is the only surviving demonstration computer that was built. And what Steve Jobs did is he went to his longtime friend, Daniel Cockty, who was an also an Apple employee, and he said, Daniel, hook this machine up so I can just plug it in and show them something. Because up to this point, you had to load all your software from an audio cassette drive that was very finicky, as we know from experience here at the museum, trying to get it to work. So Daniel modifies it with a EEPROM loaded with Steve Wozniak's version of BASIC. Um, so when you immediately boot it up, because all the other Apple ones, other other than literally this one behind me, don't have that feature. Every other Apple One has no ROM, so as soon as you turn it off, everything's gone. You'd have to type it in from scratch. 